concluded Africa Agri-Tech 2023 conference and exhibition was dedicated to connecting the Southern African agricultural, scientific, and technology communities at one event staged over three days. The event aimed to deliver premium insights coupled with best-in-class presenters and suppliers exploring global trends and advances in agricultural science, technology, and innovation, and the benefits that these will bring to the agricultural ecosystem in the future. Wandile Shibolo, who is the chief economist at the Agricultural Business Chamber, was a speaker at the event, and he joins us now to discuss further. Uh, Wandile, great to have you, uh, to, to see you again. Um, can you give us a summary of the conference? Was it a success? Thanks for having me on. Uh, I would say the conference was, uh, was a success in a sense that the idea was to say, how do we showcase some of the new technologies that are key for driving productivity in agriculture? And in that process, make sure that we get great participation from all of the key players in South and Africa region. And of course, also tapping in the expertise and technologies that we see somewhere in the Northern Hemisphere and looking at the exhibition and looking at the people that were there and various topics uh, that were discussed, both from mechanical, data related, and even some of the biological discussion that were there, I would say uh, the summit was indeed a success. At the conference, you said uh, we know a lot about commercial farming in South Africa, but not very much about smallholder farmers. How can data help in that regard? Absolutely. This is a great problem in South Africa because we still have a dualistic agricultural sector, which means that there's a commercial sec sector size segment, and there's also those segments that are in the smallholder farmers. And the idea then is to say, how do we extract more data from a smallholder side to say, where are they located? How many of them? What are they producing? What are the productivity level? The idea on that is to make sure that we set up policies and programs that will respond to the needs of those farmers and even on ensuring that there are products and services that they need they are well tailored uh, for them and i think that the data can assist us there but what can technology do on that technology in a form of a gis systems that can be used to extract all of these data that i think are key for policy and the planning and that the that I was in was emphasizing um, at the point. All right, now here's a quote from uh, one of the, another participants there, Xander uh, Ernst. He, he said that we, we need to look at how to raise effectiveness on farms. I don't think it's only about technology, but about collecting more data. So my, my, my question here is um, basically is, should we focus more on the data than the tech or they go hand in hand? I think Zenda is right, uh, uh, but I would move more towards your, your your latter part of your point to say these go hand in hand, because of course we have to be collecting data. Data tells us about the activity and the issues that are happening on the ground. But then we will have technological response onto some of those problems. But we'll also be leaning on the technologies uh, in, in in extracting that data, which is the point that I was making to say how do we manage to use some of the satellite. Uh, uh, capabilities that we have to extract that data that is useful data then which is used by farmers and planning at a regional level but also the policymakers at a national level and i think this is not a south africa question but it's more of an african continent question because of course we have a number of countries in the east of africa in the west of africa that where we do not really understand uh, perfectly what's happening on the ground and technology can assist us onto that so it's a hand in hand and our conversation that we should be having and of course implementation that should be happening across the African continent. Oh yeah, certainly. I mean, here in Nigeria, we have a, I mean, pretty much a majority of the farmers here are subsistence farmers and smallholder farmers. So we definitely need that help with data here. Another quote from uh, Mark uh, Hassenkamp, uh, I think he's with uh, Horit, uh, Horiculture, I believe is the company he's with. It says an inevitable reality to Red Dune Horitech, actually. Inevitable reality to use robotic labor to increase production yield. However, there is a cost in replacing manpower. It is inevitable and we need to remain competitive. So I want to ask you about, about this. Um, is there a real fear that human labor will be replaced or will the gains from increased output using robots make up for that loss of human labor? How does that work out? I mean, I think here, uh, you know, the, the aspiration for the African continent is to say, let's try to find a way to increase 
agricultural productivity. And we know from the theories of economics that as agriculture continues to improve, productivity rises and the commercializing, there's always going to be a decline in labor. But what we should be paying a focus on or attention on is to say, how do we continue to upskill uh, the, the labor so that they participate more on the value chain? And if people are moving towards the value chain and they are being upskilled, their wages also increases. And of course, the standards of living also improve onto that. So I would not take a posture where we say, look, let, let's not be so fast on adopting technology so that we save jobs, because there could be many more jobs jobs that could be on the value chain. And I think we should be utilizing uh, technology for driving productivity. And you will recall in a previous conversation I had with you in here, we talked a lot about this need of productivity following the Dhaka conference to say in the African continent in largely reading, but at the same time on the mechanical side of technology for that good of our uh, yield improvement, which is the key focus that I think it should be across all of the countries in the continent. All right. It has a very optimistic quote from uh, Norman Selliers. I think he's the CEO of uh, Africa. He was also part of this conference, as were you. He says, the agriculture industry coupled with technology, I can't help but be incredibly positive. Combining human excellence and tech will make agriculture, here it is, one of the most exciting industries in the next 50 years. Is he is he being too excited there, or is this, what do you tie what he's saying? What do you think of this prediction, or if it will come through? Uh, what do we mean for Africa in particular? I, I think what, what Norman is putting forward is the same message to the extent that I heard uh, from uh, Dr. Sid at the, the African Development Bank. And I think there is indeed uh, a, 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 a opportunities in agriculture to grow this sector. And I mean, when you bring technology in, you speak exactly to that point around productivity and there's value that can be created in, in here. And I think the technology question is so important in a sense that we are not only in the quest to grow Africa's agriculture for our own consumption. But we also want to be in a, in, a, in, a, in a place where we can export and participate in a global market as the African continent. To be able to do that then, it means we have to produce in an effective and an efficient way and be able to compete effectively out there. And I think that's what Norman is speaking about to say with the technology and us pro producing in a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a competitive way, then we can gain so much in the global market and the value of this sector could increase and of course the gains for communities and society that we're part of. I want to ask you about, about technology being able to help Africa make a transition from I guess raw goods to finished goods. Take cocoa for instance, Ivory Coast, Ghana, they lead the market but they aren't part of the global multi-billion dollar chocolate uh, market. So how, 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 do you, how do we make that transition? Can tech help there? I mean, I think then that that's where the joint venture approach is, where many people in Africa talk the PPP approaches to say, how do you bring private sector and actually set up incentives in some of these countries? Either it's more of a tax incentive or laying down some certain infrastructure that is needed or developing some industrial development zones where processing could pretty much happen. And I think there's a lot we can learn in African content. I mean, the cocoa, as you rightly put, it, is a classic example of that. But the other commodities, either you are looking at Madagascar, you're looking at uh, South Africa, Zambia, where we can be able to add our uh, value on that. Technology is what would enable us to do that. But I think, again, everything else has to start back from policy to say other policies are right? Are there incentives in place to enable uh, this? Is there conversations happening with private sector to entice them to invest? And then, of course, then the production is what is already going to be happening on the ground level. And in that ground level production, we have to ensure also we deal with this issue of fragmented uh, value chains in much of the countries in the region. So there is promise there, but there's a number of things that you have to put in place for us to be able to realize that potential. Great stuff. Great conference. Lots of information shared. We're glad you joined us to talk about it. Uh, Wandila Shivo, Chief Economist at the Agricultural Business Chamber. Thank you so much for your time.